Hello, this is the Provoke Prawn, and this is the Corsair MP600GS. This is a Gen 4 PCIe NVMe SSD, which will give you up to 4,800 megabyte read speeds, if installed correctly in a relevant motherboard that supports Gen 4 alongside a fast enough CPU. And in this build, I'm using the NZXT N7Z790 motherboard and an Intel i9 12900K. Although ideally you'd use a 13900K, but that's a different story. And I'm going to show you the setup process on this motherboard and also the things to bear in mind while doing it, how to set it up in Windows, what to look for in your BIOS and other things. Now in the box, you only get the driver. This is an important point of note because it may well be that you don't have the screw. If you haven't purchase the motherboard yourself if you bought a pre-built machine you might find that you don't have the necessary screw for screwing this down don't worry i'll leave a link in the description so you can purchase some more it's a tiny little screw but it is an important part of it now on most modern motherboards you'll find two or three spaces for nvme ssds on there i've done a video separately on why you need to pay attention to what slot you're using it can make a difference usually the top m2 port on your motherboard is the fastest but in this instance i'm using the second one and the reason for that is i'm actually filling the top one with my windows boot drive and this corsair drive will be used for other things like games now it's worth using a drive for windows because you will boot in really quickly into windows but also games will load faster on it video files will transfer faster and a lot of other things. You can see the process for installing it is really straightforward. You pop the drive in and hold it down and then screw it down to the standoff screw. Now these screws are included with your motherboard if you purchase the motherboard and you're going about this installation process before you put it into the PC or even when it's in the PC. You will find these screws included with the motherboard. But as I said, if you haven't purchased the motherboard just now and you bought a pre-built machine and you're just trying to add an NVMe SSD to it, then you can buy the screws separately. So it's worth keeping that in mind. And I'll leave a link in the description so you can find that out. Once you've put that drive in, obviously then just replace any covers. Usually you'll find thermal pads and stickers on motherboard covers as well. So it's worth watching out for those. You peel off the sticker and make sure the thermal pad is applied to the drive. But this one doesn't have any for its additional drives, but there is a nice gap there, so cooling should be perfectly fine. Now I just want to quickly show off the screws I was talking about. So you can buy kits with loads of different screws in, but the screws on the right hand side, the tiny little ones here seen next to the screwdriver, those are the M2 screws that you'll need. And they're very minuscule, so they're easy to lose, but they're also really easy to purchase extra ones of. And they're very handy for this process. Pretty important, actually, unless you've got a motherboard that has a little clip that holds the drives into place. So once that's installed, obviously just turn your PC on and go about the boot process. Now, I would recommend popping into your BIOS by just mashing the delete key on your keyboard to make sure that the drive's recognized. You can see the Corsair MP600GS is shown up here under the storage configuration settings in this NZXT BIOS. It's worth noting that sometimes you might find that it isn't appearing and this will cause you problems if you get into Windows. You may find that the drive isn't being recognized. Now this is often down to storage settings on your BIOS and it's really difficult to give guidance on what the best settings are to change because it varies from BIOS to BIOS depending on the manufacturer. And so there are some settings to play around with, but I'd recommend going into the advanced settings and looking for your NVMe configuration and PCIe configuration settings, seeing if the drive's in there and seeing if there's anything you can change, usually in terms of the speed, so the gen of the drive, gen 4, setting settings to auto, and making sure that everything's set up so that it will work properly. Again, I've done a video separately on all the things to bear in mind with NVMe SSDs when you're setting it up, but this is one of the stumbling blocks. Now, most times it is pretty straightforward. You plug the drive in, it's recognized by the BIOS, you boot into Windows, and then there's a couple of other steps to get to actually using it. But sometimes the BIOS can present a problem. So if you find that you can't see the drive when you go through the next steps, keep that in mind. So now we boot into Windows, I open up Windows Explorer and I'm only seeing one drive, which is my Windows drive. So what you need to search for, press that start button on your keyboard and then search for disk management and it will come up with create 
and format hard disk partitions. This then brings up the disk management tool, and you'll see that it's automatically tried to initialize the drive as disk one. So you just click OK on there. Now you'll see that it's black. It's not blue like the top one. So what you need to do is create a new simple volume. So right click, click new simple volume, and then go through these steps by just clicking next. Basically, we're just formatting it and assigning it a drive letter and a volume label. So I'm going to call it the Corsair MVME just so I can see which one it is with these. And now that's done. So now both those two drives are in my system and they're recognized. And then with a couple of seconds, you'll see it pop up in the Windows Explorer as well. So now I have that drive automatically recognized and on display there. So you can see the setup process for this is ridiculously easy. Now, one other thing I'd recommend is running a test to make sure it's running at the right speed. You can do this with a tool like Crystal or Dismark, which is a free download that you can get. And you can run it in here, set it up so it does nine passes, 64 gigs on the MVME settings there, and just click all and to run the test on this. I usually do this with most of the drives I install just to make sure everything's running as expected because this is a Gen 4 drive on a motherboard that supports PCIe Gen 4. So we should be seeing up to 4,800 megabytes per second read speed. And so we want to make sure that it's actually running at those speeds. Now, if you're using an older motherboard that only has PCIe Gen 3 compatibility, then you obviously won't get these maximum speeds. You may get a lot less than this. Also, if you're using the wrong slot on your motherboard or if you're installing multiple drives, then you might find the drive's actually running at X2 speed instead of X4 which means it's getting less lanes from the CPU in terms of PCIe storage, which means that you may be halving your speed here. So you may only get in 2000 megabytes per second. So it's really worth running this test to make sure everything's running as it should be and that you're getting the speeds that you want to. But there you go. That is the installation and setup process. Be sure to check out the links in the description to other things that might be useful and the specs and more on this drive. Thanks for watching. You've made it right to the end of the video, you brilliant legend you. If you've enjoyed it, click that subscribe button, give me a thumbs up, and drop me a comment down below if you've got any questions. If you really enjoyed it, consider joining the channel and see the benefits of doing so. Check out these other videos. You might well find them interesting or useful. And most importantly, have a great life.